Mind Power. You are listening to your number one career podcast. Everything you need to know to have a great career. And now, your host. Hey everybody, this is Emmanuel Chisalo from Mind Power Career Services and you are listening to the Mind Power Career Talk podcast. Episode number five, the show that empowers people to take control of their careers by offering holistic career advice and providing everyone with the knowledge, skills, and confidence that they need to crush their career goals. Today on this program, we are talking about jumpstarting your career for professional success with Mwembe Sikaulu, our lovely guest, who is a communications and brand specialist. Where we will discuss everything there is to know about choosing a career in communications and branding. Thanks for joining us, Mwembe. Hi, Emmanuel. Thank you so much for having me. Welcome to the Mind Power Career Talk podcast. Thank you. Happy to be here. We are very excited to host you. As I'm, I'm very excited. Like this is going to be a very interesting conversation. And you and I, we, we we've been conversating, I think, uh, for quite some time uh, on our um, social media platforms, more especially LinkedIn. And of course, I had the pleasure of uh, sitting down and having coffee with you, and uh, we had a conversation all around centered towards this day of hosting you on this podcast. And uh, you shared quite a number of insights, which. At that time, I felt that this could really add context to helping young professions out there who are already rolling into this corporate world. And also for young adults in secondary schools who are seeking for ways on how they could choose a career pathway. And I'm super excited that we're going to unpack this conversation centered around your own professional journey where you're going to share with us uh, your success, your, 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 your challenges, and uh, most importantly, building the conversation around the advice that our young people can pick out from this conversation and um, make their professional journeys better than some of us since we never had such kind of advice. <laughs> All right. So maybe to begin the ball rolling, uh, just in a snapshot, we'd want to know a little bit about who Mwembe is. Okay. Uh, well, Emmanuel, I am a communications and brand specialist, as you mentioned. I have a degree in uh, mass communications and a master's in global marketing. I have worked in various fields um, within those same um, sectors, of, uh, industries rather, but then uh, I've worked in television, I've worked in banking, I've worked in aviation, and I've also worked in radio. So um, that's a little bit about me. Well, that's a um, rich career journey which you've just unpacked about you more especially touching on uh, the key industries that you've uh, worked in and uh, the experience that you have so would want to appreciate and of course our listeners are very eager to know how you started mm-hmm. your career so take us through the memory lane <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, well, really, I had, when I first went to university, mm-hmm. um, I had planned on study not planned, I actually did study um, bi- uh, international business. Okay. Um, so it was more, as a lot of people I'm sure would understand, it was more of what my parents wanted. Mm-hmm. Um, I was good at it, I was passing, mm-hmm. but I wasn't uh, feeling fulfilled so to speak okay. um, and I did an internship and the internship really is what cemented that this is not where I'm supposed to be heading um, because of I I as much as I enjoyed it and I was doing okay um, I realized that I would always be mediocre at what I was doing because I had people around me who were very passionate about uh, what they were doing and um, I had to work twice as hard just to keep up with them and that's not to say anything about my abilities like I said I was mm. you know able to pass I was enjoying it and yeah, that sort yeah. of thing but I just didn't have the same passion and drive mm. that some of the people around me had so that internship was actually extremely insightful into my own uh, perspective about what I was studying at that time 
So I had gone to a guidance counselor at school and, you know, they'd give me various suggestions. So why don't you be a teacher or, you mm. know, and I'm like, no, that's, that's definitely not for <laughs> me. Um, nothing against teachers. I have massive respect for them, but mm. I just know that it wasn't my path. Um, so I was supposed to transfer universities and I had accompanied a friend of mine who was actually registering at the university that I wanted to go to. And it was, uh, it happened to be um, uh, open day. Mm -hmm. um, so as she was registering, I was just walking around some of the tables and it was a lady that beckoned me over. And, you know, she asked me, uh, you know, have you heard of communications? And um, I was like, no, not really. And as she was explaining it, I realized this is, this is everything that I like. You know, I'm so interested in this. Yeah. Uh, I love watching TV. I love reading. I love writing. Mm. And uh, of course, the first thing that came to my head was my parents. And yeah. Like, uh, <laughs> so I asked her a few questions. You know, can yeah. I work in the business field with communications? Of course you can. Mm. Can I do politics? Yes, you can. Can I do, you know, she's like, whatever you want to do, you can do with communications. Communications is needed everywhere in every sector. So, um, you know, I was really excited, as Oprah would say, I had my aha moment, because this is what I'd been searching for. I just mm. didn't know its name. I didn't yeah. know it existed. Yeah. Um, so it was serendipity that I went on that day to accompany my friend, and it happened to be op open day, and this lady happened to beckon me over to the one table I went to, and it happened to be what I was looking for, what I didn't even know that I was looking for. And um, so called home, and I told my parents that I'm changing my major. Mm -hmm. And they're like, no, you're not. I said, yes, I am. <laughs> you know, so it was my dad especially was trying to convince me, no, do economics, do accounting. I said, those yeah. are things I'm running away from. Mm -hmm. I'm passing economics, um, passing some of those subjects you're talking about, but I don't like them, <laughs> you know. Mm -hmm. So um, in the end, I, I switched my major. I did mass communications and I did very well. Um, I was actually top of my class. Awesome, and brilliant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they, they came around, you know, yeah, and they yeah. were seeing uh, one or two things. And I think their fear was that, especially in Zambia, mm -hmm. um, the the industry was very small. Okay. And they, they were fearing that I would not be able to find a job or progress in life as opposed to being a lawyer or a doctor or an accountant and some of those traditional um, careers that yeah, yeah. Uh, Zambians are normally used to. Mm. Um, so yeah, but in the end, uh, it all worked out. So that was my journey into uh, communications. And then later on when I studied my master's, I ended up doing global marketing. Thank you very much, um, Mwembe, for bringing us up to speed um, with how you began uh, your career journey. And uh, listening to you, challenges that many young people face when it comes to choosing a career pathway. They have all these hurdles mm -hmm. uh, between following the desires of their heart and what society is telling them to become. And our society, you know, sums up with your support system. So this could be your parents, could be your, let me just say in general, your family. You have a church, you have school, you have the people that you play with. And uh, many of uh, the young people that I interact with, usually they'll tell me that, no, look, I'm very passionate about cooking. I'm very passionate about hands-on craft. But my parents want me to become a lawyer. They want me to become a doctor. So now we have a lot of young people who've actually gone into college or universities mm -hmm. pursuing careers they're not passionate about mm -hmm. because of their family or because of what society really is telling them to become. Mm -hmm. So in the end, when we produce these graduates, they are not employable in the sense that, yes, they can get the job, but they are not as productive as they could be if they were pursuing a career that they're very passionate about. Yeah, no, I agree. And um, in my parents' defense as well, yeah. um, like I said, uh, they were just fearful for me, mm. uh, but they came around yeah. and they supported me 100% uh, yeah. once I made that decision. Absolutely. And, um, but I do agree with what you're saying. Mm -hmm. And this is why I feel that a lot of young people need to try and understand themselves, yeah. what it is that they're passionate about. Mm -hmm. um, for example, in my family, we have um, a lawyer, we have an accountant, we have uh, various uh, 
array of careers. So um, if my parents want a lawyer, they, they had one, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. But, um, but I always just, you know, when you're young, you don't know exactly what you want to do for the rest of your life. Um, and this is why I always say just do something that you're interested in. Um, like you're saying, a lot of young people sometimes will go into, um, will study certain subjects thinking it to also be easier. And I saw that with communications. You had some people who had studied, for example, business. And um, instead of maybe they had a tough time in, in that, uh, in, in that uh, subject, and so they ended up switching to communications, not because they were actually interested in it, but because they thought it would be easier. But guess what? It wasn't easy. Mm -hmm. You know, they actually had a hard time. So a lot of times I hear people going um, to study certain subjects because they think, oh, I just need a degree. Let me just get that degree and then it would be simple. It's, it's not. If you don't have a genuine interest in that particular subject, it will not be easy. You will not be the best in the class because of you're not going to really have any interest in what you're studying. So it's important to, at the very least, have an interest in what you said. You can be interested in multiple things, yeah. and then pick one. You can always do a double a double major. You can always do a master's. You can even have several degrees mm -hmm. uh, if you're lucky enough to be able to afford it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So right. yeah, there's there's always that option. Mm -hmm. And uh, talking about uh, interest, I think um, mainly in the conversation that we are having, you've bordered on on. Uh, having interest in something mm -hmm. um, which all amounts to being passionate about a specific um, career pathway. So how did you become interested in communications? It was just natural. Like, mm -hmm. It was honestly natural. Um, like I mentioned, I loved watching TV. Uh, yeah. I would, to the point where I'd be in trouble as a child, <laughs> where they say you watch I TV. mean, everyone, uh, I mean, including myself, I, I was in trouble at some point. Right, exactly. Yeah. And even commercials. I mm -hmm. enjoyed watching the commercials. I found them interesting, you know? And so a lot of people, okay, nowadays would forward through commercials. Um, but then I actually enjoyed also watching that as well. I enjoyed obviously watching movies. I enjoyed reading books. Um, I enjoyed business as well, mm -hmm. you know? So there were certain things, like I enjoyed creating things, I enjoyed writing. So a lot of the things that um, are in communications, I already sort of enjoyed like creating certain things, coming up with, uh, with concepts, um, imagining certain things. And that was basically, um, it was just natural, if I can put it that way. So, and I didn't know that it was leading me into this path or onto this path. For me, it was just what I enjoyed. Brilliant. Brilliant. I love your response. Mm, something that came so natural, mm -hmm. something that uh, you enjoyed, and uh, this came as a result of paying attention to your immediate environment, what you were glued to, television. Uh, some of us, like myself, I never had that opportunity of watching TV. Yeah, because every time when I'm setting my eyes on TV, my dad would be like, you are going to fail your exams. <laughs> Better get off uh, that TV, go to your study room, uh, prepare for your test, do your homework and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, um, and, and um, for you to share with us how you built your interest, how you built your passion towards communication really came from your natural environment. Yeah. Which is something that I'd really want to point out to young people, to pay attention, first of all, to who they are, and what is surrounding them. It is out of those things that you repeatedly do over and over that could lead you to your dream career. Mm -hmm. And now, um, talking about your professional journey, uh, what's the importance of communications and uh, brand management when it comes to companies or organizations? Well, it's extremely important. Yeah. Um, really, um, the brand is the image, um, and it has to, it's the aesthetics, um, it's your, your promise to your clients. Um, it's, it's, it's a mix of everything, your service quality, mm -hmm. um, your integrity, and you have to stick to it, you have to be authentic, you have to be transparent as well. Um, communications really is, it speaks for itself. Um, it's how you communicate, what you communicate, to whom you communicate. Um, and there's various, there's internal, there's external, um, there's just the general general public, um, but of course you have your, your stakeholders as well. Um, so it's a very important, um, 
It's a very important aspect of any organization. And as I mentioned, um, it's still a growing industry in Zambia. It's come a long way. Um, it's not as far as I would like to see it. Um, if you look at the way other countries and um, other industries are regarded, uh, how communications is regarded in other countries. And um, for example, we talked about how accountants are revered and lawyers and doctors and everything. And uh, communications and brand management is not yet given that status, but it really should be because it is a vital part of any organization. Thank you, uh, Mwembe, for that response. And uh, it just shows us, even at an individual level, we need to really invest in our personal brands. Yeah, yeah. Especially in this day and age. I mean, back in the day, if you tell your parents, uh, you know, how, uh, what's your personal brand, they'll look yeah. at you like you're mad. <laughs> but nowadays, social media, I mean, you have these teenagers making millions, yeah. you know, in certain countries. And, uh, and they have a personal brand. They have their own brand. So it's not just companies. That, that have a brand. It's also individuals that also have a brand. Absolutely. And uh, talking about um, us as individuals, really, you know, having a personal brand, um, what would you say is your personal brand? How do you describe, <laughs> how, how do you describe yourself as a brand? Okay. Of course, you've described yourself as Mwembe yeah. uh, in, uh, in the initial uh, introductions. But now as a brand, how do you describe yourself? I would probably describe myself as, I would, okay, maybe I would describe my brand as being professionalism. Okay. Um, it's about getting the job done, doing it well, and doing it uh, to the best of my abilities. I think I am definitely one of those people that um, I am a direct person. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that comes across in everything I do, whether it's my personal life and mm -hmm. in my professional life. Um, and yes, I'm, I'm professional. And when I say that, I mean it really is about um, ensuring that whatever task that's put in front of me is done to the best of my ability. Amazing response. Professionalism. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'm trying to think, what's my brand? Uh -huh. uh, Tell us. <laughs> Well, I think I've branded myself as a CV surgeon. Okay. Yeah, occupying um, the career services space. Mm -hmm. So specifically, that has been my trajectory, uh, offering um, different career products and services to clients, starting from secondary school pupils who would need direction in choosing a career pathway, mm -hmm. hitting up to graduates who are trying to seek entry-level employment opportunities, mm -hmm. And also already working uh, professionals uh, who just want to change or seek new employment opportunities. Yeah. So I get to brand their career marketing documents, uh -huh. CVs, cover letters, yeah. optimize their LinkedIn profiles, so on and so forth. And you sound, you see right there as you're describing all of that, uh -huh. you sound passionate, <laughs> you enjoy it. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. yeah. And that's really all that matters at the end of the day. So you see, you've made something mm -hmm. out of an interest that you had. And mm -hmm. in, in the end, you're actually helping the youths. You're helping these young people, yeah. guiding them in their yeah. career journey, whether it's at the start, at the middle. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, you should be proud <laughs> of yourself. Thank you very much. And it's funny how this journey really started. Um, I remember several years ago, I think past a decade, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I come from Choma. Okay. Yeah. So I struggled, uh, struggled um, you know, identifying a career pathway. Mm -hmm. So I'm in an environment where, you know, the, a few people are accomplished, but majority of the people, you know, the school dropouts and stuff like that. So based on my background, you know, coming from a poverty stricken family, lost both of my parents when I was very young. I had, uh, you know, what I would say a role model when it came to looking at what I want to become in the future. I want to be like Mwembe or I want to be like this person and so on mm -hmm. and so forth. But I was working very hard in school. I was getting excellent grades. Mm -hmm. So when it came to choosing a career pathway, I was stuck. And uh, I remember applying, I think that was the last week before they closed mm -hmm. uh, at Copper Belt University. I just said, okay, fine, let me go with business administration. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
So now when I got exposed to the university environment and looked at different opportunities that exist, various careers that they are offering, I said that when I go back home during the vacation, I need to visit secondary schools within my range mm-hmm. and begin sharing this information with the young people. Mm-hmm. And the moment when I get to those environments, you ask these young adults, what do you want to become? Like, I don't know. I don't know who I want to become. For those that answered, oh, I want to be a doctor, I want to be a lawyer, just the same traditional career mm-hmm. pathway. I'm all right. So I said, uh, there is a missing link. There is no provision of career guidance information. And at the end of the day, education is not purpose-driven. Mm-hmm. So that's how I embarked on this journey, doing it voluntarily, providing these services as and when I have the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and um, I realized that, okay, yeah, this could be a great market opportunity. Let me write some books, which I did, and they were approved by Ministry of General Education oh, with a 93% rating. So oh. it's like A+. Right. Like the content was great and approved to be used in schools. Yeah. So from there, this is how the journey has now grown mm-hmm. to a level now we're having a podcast. Right. Yeah. So that if they cannot see the man behind the book, they're able to watch us mm-hmm. where we're engaging with um, a community of practice who are sharing their respective career stories. Mm-hmm. They could draw inspiration Absolutely. from there. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, you mentioned something, and I think you and I both pointed out something. Mm-hmm. We both had no idea yeah. what we wanted to do in life. Mm-hmm. We didn't know in terms of career path. And I think that's the the thing, uh, the issue that a lot of young people have nowadays. They think they should know. And yeah. it's okay if you don't know. And this mm. is why sometimes you experiment. And as you mentioned before, look at the things that you're interested in. Mm. So a lot of times people get stressed out because they have no idea what yeah. they should study or what career that they want. Mm. And, I'm, and I'm here to say to anyone listening who's young and is at that stage in their life, it's okay. It's okay. You will figure it out. It's okay. You will figure it out, just like the way I did figure it out. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, here we are today, passionate about our own respective uh, career journeys. So now, um, looking at how you've na- 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 navigated through your own career pathway, of course, you started out differently and uh, ended up you know, switching to something that you love and something that you, you are passionate about. All right. So... Would you mind sharing with us a few strategies that you had employed, mm. you know, to switch from international business to getting into communications and some of the challenges that you had experienced? Well, I wouldn't say there was a strategy, really. Okay. Yeah. It, it, like I mentioned, it was just meeting that lady, which was just serendipity. Mm-hmm. And um, I think it was, you know, God's plan at the end of the day. So nothing to do with any strategy it was just fate Mm -hmm. um yeah so uh in terms of switching like i said and that was also when i was still at school yeah so it was just changing what i was studying when i entered the um the the work environment i entered uh, my very first job um within like after finishing school Mm -hmm. um of course i had jobs in school Mm -hmm. um but then when, when finishing school, um, I worked at a TV station okay. and I was a producer there. Um, so that, that was part of what I studied and what mm-hmm. I enjoyed doing and, and stuff like that. And then, uh, then from there I moved to the bank. But in the bank, um, it was very monotonous um, where I started initially. So I was in the branch and you know, you're doing your cashiering and you know, um, all the other stuff that goes on in a branch and I wasn't enjoying it. And it was one of those things that a lot of people go through. Um, you know, you need a job that pays. Yeah. And yeah, even though it was very, it was entry level. So trust me, not all bankers make money. <laughs> That's a myth. <laughs> <laughs> so it was very, very entry level. Really? Oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> Um, and so, yeah, then from there, I managed to move to head office mm-hmm. and um, and also get attached to, at that time, which the, the brand management section, which also, also dealt with communications and also dealt with customer service. And that's really now when the learning began in terms of, uh, apart from obviously the TV station that I that was working at, but now in, in the corporate world, um, learning what really happens in terms of brand, man- brand management and uh, communications, customer service, 
uh, CSR and, and all of that. So um, it, was, it was a great training ground. And then from there I moved to, to the aviation sector, um, which was also um, a different sort of industry and a lot to learn as well. Very interesting. Um, and that's the great thing about communications and branding mm -hmm. and marketing is that you can move to various industries doing what you do. Um, but then because you have to be creative and come up with different concepts and different things and it's, it's never, there's never a dull moment, you know. So there's other, like I mentioned, I was in the branch and uh, when you're a cashier, it's the same thing every day. Every day you're doing the same thing. But then even though in my, in my job, technically I was doing the same thing, yeah. but it's never really the exact same thing because mm -hmm. you always have to come up with new things. You know, uh, when I was growing up, I used to think that one of the highly paid professional was the banking sector. Mm -hmm. And I thought that uh, everyone who works in the bank, because they deal with money, they make the most fortune mm. out of that. And uh, of course, later on, as, um, as I kept on researching on various sectors and industries, uh, practicing as a career uh, coach, um, I realized that that was just a myth. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. And not to, with respect, not to say anything wrong about banking. Of course. Uh, yeah. uh, everyone plays a key role in economic development. Yeah. Yeah, but these were just my own thoughts that, look, if anything, I just want to be a banker because I'll be going back home with sacks and sacks of money. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, as you know, I mean, it depends also on your level. Yeah. There are some people who, you know, do make a lot of money and that's why mm -hmm. the perception is there. Yeah. But then there are other people, it's like any industry. Yeah. In some industries, obviously the boss will go home with a lot of money. Yes. And yes. then you find others will not. And mm -hmm. it's just whichever level that you're on at that time. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's across the board. It's yeah. not just in in the banking world it's it's basically in every sector yeah yeah so uh you have shared with us um your entry level um you know jobs mm -hmm. yeah where you started first of all in a uh, television station and then went into the banking sector then moved and you you found what we would call your niche you know where you're able to practice as a communications and a brand specialist how then, for instance, the young people that are watching and also listening to us, uh, how then can they get into this field, those that are interested in pursuing a career in communications and branding? Mm -hmm. Well, I think it's like any other field. Okay. Um, you know, you have to have a genuine interest mm -hmm. um, and then study it. And I think one of the mis uh, misperceptions that mm -hmm. are there is that... Uh, if you've studied journalism, that you can be a communications person. That is not, in my, in my opinion, that is not true. Journalism is different. Um, so you, if you know a little bit about journalism, I mean, you watch the news, you read the newspapers and whatnot, there's a different sort of training than a communications person or a brand management person. Mm -hmm. um, so you do need to study communications as in communications mm -hmm. not journalism yeah. um, so that's one of the uh, one of the misperceptions that I've uh, uh, that I've seen and then um, I always believe in internships okay so if you do have an in, uh, an interest and I like I mentioned to you before my story when I went from my internship um, when I was studying international business that really opened my eyes that look this is not the path that I should be on and so I always always encourage people do an internship, have a feel, you know, because sometimes uh, you romanticize yeah, uh, yeah, certain careers yeah. and you think, yeah, this is what I want. But when you have a little bit of a taste and you realize, OK, maybe not, you know, mm -hmm. and then again, you can have a taste and you realize, well, actually, yes, it cements your belief that this is what you want to do. And then from there, you're able to actually learn and learn from people who are working in that industry and you are getting real life experience. So by the time you finish school, you already have a little bit of a CV, you know, to say, I worked here, I did this here. You even have references in case anyone wants to, to call and ask um, how good of a, a worker you are, so to speak. So I always encourage internships as that will help you either cement your belief or it will help you find a different path if you realize that this is not for me. Now, talking about uh, internship, 
one of the challenges um, more especially in our Zambian job market that um, graduates are facing or students is having an opportunity to intern it's like most of the organizations or companies haven't really opened their doors to take on interns so i find that even just getting an internship opportunity is as hard as getting an actual job so then in this case like you've encouraged that it's very imperative that um you get an internship to have a few of your industry or what you are pursuing and in case you're not very much interested in you would have that same opportunity as well to switch into something that really you could throw your energy and become the best version of yourself so how can for instance young adults more special students and graduates go about securing an internship Okay, I can only speak to what I've seen. Mm-hmm. Um I wouldn't be able to speak to the broader mm-hmm. market. Um I have seen a lot of companies offer internships. Okay. Um as I mentioned in the banking sector, the company I worked for had a lot of internships even in the aviation sector as well. Um and I think maybe some of the expectations young people have is that they expect an internship to be like a job where they get paid for it. Mm-hmm. And if they're willing to do a free internship, the internship that I did was free. Mm-hmm. I did not get paid for it at all. Uh, not even transport money actually mm. um so i think if people are willing to do the internship for free then that might be a game changer okay. um and then also just be willing to also look at other other um uh, companies that may not be your your banks or your your uh, meat companies or whatever it might be um you can also look at some of the shops in the mall you know and when i say that it's even because it, you, you're looking at the work experience yes, yes so that's really some of the things to get your foot in there and say okay this is it and then you you keep moving up because again when you you send your application to say look i've worked uh, um or i've done an internship for bata or whatever you know i've worked for you know this company or whatever it is um sorry internship wise um that might also give you um more of a chance because then when you go into those corporates that um I don't want to name names yeah, obviously yeah. but when you go into certain companies in the corporate sometimes they do want someone with a little bit of experience that when they they know that okay if I give this responsibility to someone or to this person rather um they will be able to handle it they do have a little bit of experience so um I think sometimes young people need to be willing I I know that it's not the case for everyone not everyone can do a free internship because you do need the transport but some organizations have uh have transport that they do provide mm-hmm. so you know they have drop off points like buses and things yeah, like yeah. that so i think um instead of looking at this bank or that bank or whatever company it might be i think you need to widen your your perspective widen your perspective and um i think a few years ago when i was um undertaking a uh, a fellowship study in uh, the USA so I was based in Washington DC at Howard University mm-hmm. uh during summer I could see how they were exposing you know students in high school mm-hmm. uh, those that are almost done with high school and are looking to pursue various career pathways they would expose them to the world of work expose them to the world of higher learning Mm-hmm. So during summer I would be visited by various uh, students from different schools within uh, Washington DC and at the same time also they have a concept that they call job shadowing. Mm-hmm. So before you make a career choice uh say maybe you have options okay no, I'm not sure whether I should become an accountant a doctor mm-hmm. or maybe become like Mwembe communications and branding so then how do I go about identifying which among mm-hmm. you know these options I have to be the best career pathway so they would expose them like okay fine you have these four sectors you think that you could choose a career pathway mm-hmm. then they'll take them to those industries yeah. or, or institutions you go and shadow uh, a doctor shadow a lawyer shadow an engineer so at the end of the day now you have a feel yeah. of what exactly these people do how their day looks like some of the challenges perhaps if you could be exposed to those challenges and um, prospects on the market in terms of both entrepreneurship and also 
employment. Yeah. And I feel perhaps that could be a concept which we can introduce here in Zambia. Actually, it's there. It's um, there. Yes. Um, let me also just be fair. Uh, you okay. reminded me of something. Yeah, yeah. I know that UNSA, uh-huh. um, maybe not the job shadowing, but yeah. I know that UNSA and I think CBU, I could be wrong, but I think CBU as well, but I know there's other universities yes, yes, yes. who do actually write to the corporate world mm-hmm. and ask that certain students be interns there yeah. whether it's for a three-month period or six-month period or whatever it is yeah. so a lot of these students if you're still in school can actually go to the the university that you are mm-hmm. at um, i do also want to mention that uh, my very first internship yeah. was when i was 16 years old i grew up in england mm-hmm. and we have work experience yeah. um, so one week where you go into um, a sector so for me um, i wanted to go at that time i thought i might be a lawyer and so um, I wanted to go to law firm, but unfortunately, um, I wasn't placed in one. I was placed in a school. Yeah. And that's where also the teaching thing came in because of, that's why when, when later on in life, when mm-hmm. my guidance counselor said, maybe you can be a teacher, I knew I didn't want to be a teacher because in my work experience, uh, when I was 16 years old, I was a teacher for a week mm-hmm. and it just wasn't for me, <laughs> you know? So, um, but you're right. Maybe there's more that can be done. Yeah. Um, but then I do want to give credit to some of the schools out there who do try and engage the corporate world to get their students to have internships as well. Yeah, I agree with you. But to some extent, um, I must make mention that there is a weaker link mm-hmm. between uh, Highland Institution and industry and collaboration yeah. uh, here in Zambia. Okay. Uh, the reason why I'm saying this is that um, I was once at the Copper Belt University mm-hmm. and I'd received that same letter mm-hmm. uh, where the university is introducing me to this would-be organization that would take me in as an intern. Mm-hmm. But with that letter, still it was a challenge really to actually gain access to an internship because for instance you apply or you take this letter to this particular institution they'll tell you no right now i think we don't have space mm-hmm. or maybe we've already taken in uh, some intent so on and so forth mm-hmm. so um yes it can be existing but what we need to do now is to strengthen mm-hmm. uh university or highland institution and industry collaboration mm-hmm. so that without any struggle all right just like the way it's done in europe uh Institutions out there, companies, organizations, I know there are a few mm-hmm. who are taking in interns, but majority of them as well, they must be receptive yeah. to to accommodate uh, students so that they could equip them with employability right. skills. Right. I would even say start at secondary school because yeah. if you have an idea at secondary school level, uh-huh. then you're most likely to study what you're truly interested in at university. Yes, yes, Because if you're studying something at university, then you go do various internships, and Mm -hmm. then you realize that I'm studying actually the wrong thing. It sets you back because you have to now go and, you know, start from scratch, or Mm -hmm. you already know that I'm I'm doing the wrong thing, you know. So I actually think it should start from a secondary school level, and I think that really did help in England when Mm -hmm. I did it um, because of you, you sort of had an idea. And even though, for example, what I did my work experience on teaching, I had no interest in, in it, but later on in life, when someone was suggesting that for me, yeah. I already knew because I experienced it earlier in mm-hmm. my in my uh, in my youth to know that well, I know you're suggesting this for me as a possible career path, but I've already experienced it, and yeah. it's not for me. And a building on what you've just shared, so in in your view or opinion, what do you think, um, both from the government and also uh, citizens? What do you think we need to do to create such kind of a model, all right, where from secondary school, uh, these pupils are exposed to the world of work um, to gain a similar experience where you are tested, okay, here, no, here, Your there. Manual. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, like just in your opinion, if, for instance, you grew up in London, I mean, England, and uh, you experience that environment, which has to a great extent, I do believe, shaped who you are today because of the vast experiences you had gained. So how can we translate such kind of a model into our Zambian environment? Wow. Um, okay. I am not an uh, educator <laughs> in any way. Um, yeah. yeah, so I, I, wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't presume to tell those uh, who have actually worked in that field, who mm-hmm. are actually working on policies for that, yeah. uh, what to do. However, um, like you like you said there needs to be probably more collaboration mm-hmm. and um 
like I said, starting from secondary school, possibly. Um, and yeah, so I, I really just think that maybe it, it might even be the ministry who, mm -hmm. who gets involved and, and tries to see how best they can um, bridge a gap between um, the corporate world and uh, education facilities. Yeah. Um, it, could, it could be that. So yeah, uh, when, I, when I was studying, I was studying actually in America, mm -hmm. um, but then my, like I mentioned, my secondary school and primary were done in, were done in the UK. And um, so they were different experiences. But at the very same time, like you said, um, very pertinent experiences that I that I had. Yeah. Yeah. So, and it would be great, I think, for for uh, secondary school kids to have some sort of maybe the shadowing, um, like you've mentioned, and yeah. just to get an idea. I did a, a talk a few weeks ago at um, um, the Zambian Institute of Marketing was doing a careers day. <laughs> so a lot of the kids from different secondary schools uh, came to the venue. Um, we had about, I think, 500 plus kids. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is secondary school kids. And um, it was interesting because a lot of them had never heard of marketing or communications and, and branding and, you know. In this day? In this day uh, yeah, as or, a career. Yeah, yeah. yeah, as a career. Uh, I mean, they, they knew about certain things. I mean, they watch TV and all of that. So, you know, when you actually speak to them to say that, yeah. look, you know, marketers or communications people and whatnot are the ones that are are doing all of this that you that you're seeing and mm -hmm. you know so a lot of them you know became interested to say hey i want to find out more you know because of like you're saying it was the traditional the lawyers the doctors and whatnot yeah. so others are saying well i'm i'm interested in for example science and that's what i want to do and you know and that's great you know because what you want to do is expose the young minds mm -hmm. to to the choices that are available yeah. because if they're not exposed and they do not know what's on offer, then they will keep going for the traditional. And there's nothing wrong with the traditional ones. I, I think uh, let's just get that um, yeah. clear, you know, in case nothing anyone, wrong. there's nothing, nothing wrong. Nothing wrong. Yeah. So if you really do want to be any of those traditional um, careers or you want to do those traditional careers, that's, that's fine. Um, but then there are other options, especially in this day and age. And so I think for, um, young people in Zambia, there's nothing wrong with just exposing them to that, to introducing them to to those options, and then letting them make up their minds on what they want to do. Exposure and exposure is very is, is very key. Mm -hmm. Even uh, just as adults as we are, all right. Uh, if you're not exposed to to information, mm -hmm. you're not exposed to opportunities. You cannot know how great you are. You cannot know how how much potential yeah. lays within you. So when you're exposed to various opportunities or various platforms, they then give you the information and you use that information as a vehicle to make sound decisions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely, yeah. Amazing, all right. And I feel, uh, I think you and I and everyone else of us um, who have gone ahead of these young adults, we, we have this opportunity of creating a community of practice mm -hmm. where we can begin sharing information about various careers. Okay, uh, you will be surprised, like you mentioned, you go to have a talk, you know, a career talk with 500 plus students and most of them, it's like that's when they're hearing that actually there's a career in communications, there's a career in branding, there's a career in marketing. So if we did have such kind of continuous engagement, with the pupils themselves, uh, we can then broaden their minds, broaden their perspective, mm -hmm. and also they could learn that actually opportunities are not limited to, the, to, to, to Zambia. I could be what I want to be beyond this country. I can go to Europe, I can go within Africa, and just unleash my inborn drive mm -hmm. and create that impact and change the world. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. And uh, so, really, uh, as we, you know, um, talk about branding, talk about communications, and uh, I know that right now to the listeners and the viewers, most especially the young adults who are watching you, they're like, oh my God, I want to meet this lady. Yeah, She's inspired me. I just want to learn more about her, learn more about this, you know, career in communications and branding. So uh, what would you say then uh, the in-demand skills, abilities, and personal attributes essential for success in your field? 
Mm, I think on that one, truth be told, is um, you need to have some sort of writing ability. Mm -hmm. um, and you write a lot, by the way. So you, you definitely need to be um, a good writer. And of course, those things can develop over time. No one is born, um, you know, no one is born to be um, a good writer per se. Um, you need to have creativity. Um, so sometimes it can be intimidating because, you know, when people are creative and you, they come up with certain things and you're thinking, oh, I, I probably couldn't think of that. And, you know, but then we're all creative in our own different ways. Yeah. So you might find that someone has great skills for being creative in the advertising um, point, um, advertising um, area. Mm -hmm. But then you might find someone else is creative in terms of um, just imagining or coming up with concepts for um, how to develop a brand, you know, that sort of thing, how to communicate better with, uh, with stakeholders and, um, you know, event management and all of that. Um, so I would say just research as well. Mm -hmm. um, read. The information is, is out there. Okay. Um, yeah, so I think just research, read, and there's always room for improvement. I mean, even when you look at people who are in, I think, any career really, they're always trying to improve themselves because everybody's trying to reach the next level. So um, I really wouldn't, I think there's nothing that I can finger point to uh -huh. say you need to be, you know, <laughs> because it's such a vast, such yeah. a vast um, area, such a vast sector. Mm -hmm. And there's so many things that, you know, like for example, sales, yeah. oh, excuse me. <clears throat> For example, sales is um, is under the umbrella of marketing, for example. Mm. I'm not good at sales. Well, actually, I am, but I don't enjoy it. Let me put it that way. Okay. You know, I've done sales. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Um, I, I know that I, in America, I did sales and I was good at it. I just didn't enjoy it. Um, so, you know, there's various things that are there just because you're doing sales and, you know, and marketing here. Mm -hmm. But then you can also be doing um, PR, you yeah. know, so there's, there's just various things. So I... I I wouldn't necessarily put my finger and say, you need this, you need this, you need this, uh -huh. um, because it's just so much. You need a lot of things, yeah, but yeah. there's just so much. So what I would advise is read about it. There's so many books out there. Um, and of course, when you're studying, you, you actually learn all of the things you need when you're actually studying the industry, uh -huh. you know? And nowadays you can even learn from teenagers. I mean, I'm watching Instagram and, you know, videos on Instagram and some of these other social media platforms and you're thinking, wow, you know, people are so creative nowadays, uh -huh. even if they haven't studied necessarily um, some of the, the subjects that the rest of us did back in the day. Um, so, yeah, so I would just basically say the most important thing is having an interest and having a passion for it. And then you go from there. Having an interest and having a passion for it. For instance, whatsoever we're doing right now, this podcast we're having, uh, the discussions, whatsoever I've been doing with uh, Mind Power Career Services, it's something that I never learned from school. Mm -hmm. All right. But I had this burning desire, passion, and I had to go out of my way go to the University of YouTube. <laughs> right. Yeah, and uh, then I found that there was actually a lot of resources, information that really helped me to reach where I am in terms of my practice. And uh, just to cement that, uh, I had then to look around the world. Uh, where are they offering a certified program mm -hmm. to become a career analyst. I found one in India, EDU Milestone. Mm -hmm. So I got certified by them. Then I later on joined uh, the Elite of Resume Writers. Mm -hmm. So that's a society from the United States of America mm -hmm. where now we have these career coaches, hiring managers from Fortune 500 who share with us amazing information on how we can just become great as career coaches, as mm -hmm. resume writers so on and so forth. It's been an inspiring journey that you've had um, as you are sharing with us the information. And this information really, it's going to change a few lives out there. And I do believe that they're going to use this podcast as a tool to make career decisions and also navigate uh, their career pathways. So, uh, Mwembe, as we are winding down um, this discussion, uh, of course, you and I could go on and on and yeah. on and on. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, for, for the interest of our listeners and also our viewers, as we are giving them the punchlines of this career conversation, uh, if I asked you this question, 
when you look at your career journey from start and where you are would you still pursue this same career given an opportunity to restart absolutely without a doubt yeah i would why so like i said uh-huh. um i think i have been one of the lucky ones where early enough mm-hmm. i was able to find um the subject that i actually had an interest in and get a degree in that and mm-hmm. also get a masters in something similar as well yeah um so i just already enjoyed um comms i enjoyed branding i enjoyed marketing mm-hmm. um and then to work in the industry that i studied mm-hmm. you know a lot of people don't work in the industry that yeah, they studied yeah, yeah. yeah. so um i just genuinely enjoy it um it's something that i think i i wouldn't change um and i think it's only helped me grow yeah yeah growth and talking about growth um as we conclude uh, this hot conversation talking about growth um, career progression what would then be your advice to young professionals out there trying to gain their foot in the corporate world Uh, of course you know our job market is very competitive we have um hundreds of thousands of people competing for similar opportunities mm-hmm. and yet the industry can only take in so much so for those that are still struggling to find their foot grow and progress what would be your advice to them well I would give general advice. Mm-hmm. And when I say this, I mean it's not just about career, it's about life. Mm-hmm. Um so I would encourage everyone to have a vision board. Vision And, board. Yeah. Have a vision board, know what it is that you want out of life. Um even as far fetched as it might seem, mm-hmm. have that vision board and work towards it. Have a 5-year plan for your life. Um maybe even for your career if if that's what you that's what your focus is on at the moment. Um so have a 5 year plan have a vision have a vision board as mentioned pursue your passion and that is very important so even on your vision board don't put something just because you see Emmanuel is doing a uh, careers talk and you know mm-hmm. uh CVs and uh helping people develop their CVs and what not and you think oh I want to do that too mm-hmm. because you're seeing that Emmanuel maybe is uh doing well and making money out of it or whatever it is don't do that put something that you genuinely want to accomplish that you genuinely want to achieve um on your vision board so also have a purpose for your goals everybody has goals in life and have a purpose um for for your goals and uh be intentional so engage in intentional acts um of authenticity in terms of what it is that you want to achieve in your life and one of the things that i would say in life and also if we talk about a brand is authenticity and i always say that you need to be as authentic as possible even as a person so whether people like you or hate you or don't understand you or whatever as long as you're authentic then that's all that matters and so even in your career journey be authentic in everything that you do be transparent and just be who you are and when i say be who you are as in authentic <laughs> Yeah. Um yeah so and you know we all have insecurities and fears that we go through mm-hmm, mm-hmm. um so i would say push through all of that just push through all of it it's not easy sometimes um but yeah at the end of the day um you find that some of the most successful people have failed so many times mm-hmm. um but then they push through and so what you're seeing is just a result of everything that they've been through all the experiences that they have been through Um so you know there are books nowadays that can that can help you become a bit more confident and you know push through your push through your fears. Um so that is basically what I'd advise both from a career perspective and also from from a life perspective as well. Thank you very much I'm um, for that timely advice you just hit the nail on top of his head. Ladies and gentlemen have a vision board have purpose for your goals be intentional be authentic be the real you do you and push through your insecurities whatsoever you are facing the challenges that you are facing push through your success will be determined by how much you push through what you are facing today i'm imano chisalo 
your host for the Mind Power Career Talk podcast and with my lovely guest Mwembe Sigaulu who has shared with us timely and important advice when it comes to jump starting your career and getting ahead of it. Thank you very much for joining us. Until next time, ciao.